Yeah, I was actually using Top Step Trader, uh, and I just didn't really. There were so many rules with it. Um, it was kind of frustrating. And then during the coronavirus kind of breakdown, they changed this rule that you can't be uh, within two percent of a circuit breaker and trading that contract, which was kind of difficult at the time because the S and P was doing that consistently overnight. Uh, and so then I was like, I kind of want to peel away from Top Step and. Uh, that's how I kind of found one up trader and what you guys are doing, just looking through the online, um, searching around and yeah, that's where I am now. So I think I started trading with one up consistently here, probably since, uh, maybe July or August. Um, okay. uh, but you know, the, the top step I was with them for like a year and a half, which was fine. I had some withdrawals. Um, but again, it was just kind of hard to get moving forward just because it's such a tight window. Of, of risk that they really allow you to, to have. And then I kind of want to move somewhere where that wasn't just kind of let you trade with your stops, move forward without so many precise rules when you can be in and out of the market. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of moving forward. I've been managing my own money since, you know, I have an account with Interact Rovers for quite a while, a few years. Discussing, yeah, it was kind of frustrating because they would call you asking you all these questions. Uh, and then, you know, the evaluation process, they made you get profit twice. Uh, and then the big thing for me, at least, is they made me pay data fees. I'm like, you know, if you're only letting me risk a few thousand dollars for this account, you know, my data fees are $500 a month. Uh, where one up, I don't have to pay the data fees, which is huge. Uh, kind of moving from there. But yeah, and unless, really, as long as you have a process and a rules-based system, it's really, you know, hands off. And if you need support, they're there. But essentially, you know, it's all up to you. There's a few rules where you can't kind of be holding trades through reports, which I understand, I suppose, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So I actually started my career out when I finished college, I got into be a futures broker. Uh, so that was eight years ago. And so I've basically been trading futures ever since. Um, did that for about four or five years. Then I worked for a prop firm there in New York trading futures. Um, so yeah, I've been doing it for a while. And then I kind of worked with another company, Online Trading Academy, just educating people and you know, showing them their futures trading and what have you. So I've been around it for on a daily basis for eight years. So this evaluation, I think, you know, I originally started with a 50K account and I was actually profitable on it, the evaluation, but I decided to okay. close it and do the 150 because I just need more wiggle room. I risk about $500 for a trade. Um, and so I think I did that, oh gosh, it was like late July, early August, perhaps. Uh, well, the way I find a certain zone, it's definitely discretionary, but once that zone is located, you know, I'm pretty robotic. You know, I don't really, I set it up and I don't even watch it, you know, either it gets hit or it doesn't get hit and I have my targets set up and then it's, the targets aren't hit by the end of the day, you just close out the trade. But more or less is I'm looking for a big move out of a consolidation area. And once that big move happens, you know, once they pulls back to that area, then I'll look to get, you know, long or short, depending where it is on the chart. Um, my whole idea is that the institutions can't get all their orders off on one go and that when the markets come back to those, those high volume breakaway areas, you know, there's more orders there to, um, get it's going to make a turn, turn around, uh, get off the small time frames. Uh, if you're reading how to trade online, you know, it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, if you're reading something for free that, that how to trade, you gotta look at bigger time frames, anticipate bigger moves. Uh, it's hard to be consistently successful looking at a five, 10, 15 minute chart, right? Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan aren't looking at five minute zones or some candlestick formation on a five minute chart. You know, they're looking at daily, weekly moves. Um, so be able to kind of have a, a lower risk area on, you know, some sort of formation on a bigger time frame is really going to expedite your success. Sure. So from, I'm in Newport Beach, California, so it's a little earlier for me, but 5.30 in the morning till about 7.30. I'm looking over all the markets um, on various time frames, and then just kind of depending on the trading day. Um, I set my trades up, set my targets up, and they either get hit or they don't. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I used to be a little bit more active, always trading the S&P five to 10 times a day. Um, I had some really great winners, and I had some pretty, you know, more or less win some, lose some, wasn't very consistent. Uh, so this one, I'm just looking at all products uh, and just looking for those moves. So there's going to be an opportunity um, this week. There really wasn't many trades for me. Um, you know, I traded a few times, I think twice in New Zealand short that, you know, I basically 
made a little profit. Um, and then I lost an S and P trade overnight, but more or less, um, I'm looking at the markets, you know, those first two hours, and then I'll look them at, look them, look at them again, uh, when they open at three o'clock uh, in the afternoon, just to kind of set some things up for overnight again. Um, and then I kind of repeat and then obviously Sunday, the opens a big move for me. Um, I will play gaps in currencies or the S and P or what have you. So yeah, when I, I know all the markets or all the trades that I'm looking at for Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, you know, I just set them up occasionally, you know, I'll get an alert before it gets to that zone just to make sure that it arrived. Well, if it, it arrives a slow grinding way down there, it's probably not so good. Um, but if it arrives there pretty quickly, you know, that's a, that's a trade I'm looking forward to. It was really smooth. It was really simple. It was really straightforward on what, you know, to expect on the line of, how to pass the evaluation, what you need to look for. Uh, and then the funding process was quick. Uh, I think it took a few days for me to get the account and getting up and running. Uh, and then you're just kind of on your own from there. So as long as you're consistent and have a strategy and you're not too emotional, uh, you know, it's really a seamless pro a process and I've been pretty happy with it so far. Yeah, I just had to reach out. I think it was the night before the election. So I was kind of gearing up um, and my, my software wasn't working where I'd be able to execute the trade. And I sent a quick email and I think within 20 minutes they fixed it and it was good to go. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, possibly. The one thing that I've realized is, you know, sometimes when my trades aren't getting hit during the week or a week like this, where it's just really ranging, um, I get, I lose my patience to say the least. So I'll kind of start forcing some trades overnight. I'll try to a few directional breakouts uh, where with one up, it really tells me, you know, is it really worth it? You know, you can't really risk too much capital. So might as well just be patient, wait for one of your, you know, great setups rather than just trying to force a breakout because you're impatient and didn't make any money the last day or two. I mean, I guess like the easy access to capital would be the, would be the main thing. You know, yeah. it's pretty straightforward and, you know, it's a quick funding process where some of these brokerages, you know, they could take weeks to fund you. Yeah, even um, within the U.S., if I open a brokerage account, it still takes 10, 12 days, if not longer, which can be geez. frustrating if the market's you know, only moving a lot in you know, five, seven days a month. You know, it's, it's crucial. Patience, you know, wait for the good trades is really kind of the, the big thing. You know, everyone's kind of always discussing the opportunities that are out there, but, you know, being able to evaluate the risk, reward, and the probability of the trade is, is so crucial. Because the nice thing with one up, you know, as long as you're profitable, you're going to be doing great. Um, and so it's just better to be patient rather than just kind of force and trade with your emotions. I definitely have colleagues, right, that are traders. I would completely recommend it to them just because, you know, it's wonderful not to have to trade your own capital and still get, you know, the breakdowns of withdrawals are phenomenal. Keeping your first eight grand and then 80% split from there going forward just really reduces the headache of, you know, having your own capital, you know, gives you more freedom to you know, make investments elsewhere or what have you, or you know, cover your living costs for a few months while you get your account up and running. Yeah, it was simple. I think I gave a call to one up trader and said that I completed the evaluation correctly. And I think it did in the first 15 days. And then from there, they said, great. I filled out a quick questionnaire, got the information from the funding partner. And within, you know, I think 24 hours, they reached out to me to fill out the questionnaire, maybe 48 hours and, you know, up and running within, you know, five trading days, really. It was very simple. Just a couple online forms to fill out. Yeah, for the most part, there's, a, you know, the scaling dynamic rule, I think, or there's one rule that might change as far as how many lots you can trade at a time, um, which is no big deal, though, because... You know, I'm not really risking more than 500 bucks a trade, so that's not like I need to trade at 10 lots. Uh, but other than that, it's exactly you know what you expect. Um, there's a couple little changes, but realistically, it's pretty pretty much the same thing. No, they've been phenomenal. They I haven't talked to them. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. They uh, sent me an email. They gave me their contact information if I had any questions, and you know that's that. Yeah, I mean, I have like a TV that's like a 48 inch TV that I use to look at my charts, but uh, that's about it. And then, you know, I kind of connect that to either a computer or a laptop, depending where I am.
but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Again, I'm not looking at the charts all day long. You know, I'm just setting things up in the morning. And if they get hit great. If they don't, that's okay too. There's always the next day. Uh, I follow my rules, I would say religiously, not blindly. So occasionally, you know, I will kind of trade off of a news announcement or some huge news. I'm like, okay, let's just jump in. But, you know, I have a strict risk profile. I'm never risking more than, you know, X amount of dollars per trade. Um, so if the zone's bigger than I thought, then I'll do minis or what have you, or do less contracts. Uh, but for the most part, I'm pretty calculated because, you know, there will always be, you know, more or less, there'll be an opportunity. If you miss it in the S&P, there'll be that same opportunity to trade it in, you know, the tenure or the bond. So the, the moves are out there, you can kind of get yourself set up in maybe gold rather than other things. But, it, you know, I would definitely say I follow my rules 97% of the time. Yeah, I mean, what I aim for, I mean, with this $150,000 account, so, you know, I'm up, but ideally, is, you know, I'm trying to get about, in the beginning, you know, off two lots, five, 10, 15 grand a month, and then just kind of keep adding more lots to, to it. The nice thing and the wonderful thing about trading, it's really scalable. So uh, I have a pretty good rule system. And once it works, you know, instead of trading two contracts or risking 500 per trade, I'll start risking a grand or 1500 and just keep moving up. And that's the nice thing about one up trading is once you show consistency and probability, you know, you can really scale your trading because when you just start trading 10 lots instead of two lots, and move forward from there. But, you know, in the beginning here, I'm just kind of aiming for that, you know, five to 15,000 kind of a month, keep moving forward and then, you know, scale up from there. Yeah, it's really helpful for the evaluation um, just to kind of get a good idea. Um, but for the most part, I have a spreadsheet that I use on my side that I keep track of everything. Uh, just kind of helps me with notes and more of the, mental side of things but yeah the right. analytics is great the dashboard looks good um, it's helpful to know exactly where you stand uh, trade with a stop and then the second thing would be you know limit yourself to a number of trades you can do per day uh, that will help you develop you per day uh, and waiting for the better ones you know you trade two average ones and one good one or what have you it's just not worth it you know we'll just wait for the good one and put on more contracts